Welcome back to the Digital Bird Camera Motion Control System project. And today I'm going to be showing you how we can turn this cheap $25 tripod into something a bit more exciting. So here it is at last, the Digital Bird fully functioning camera motion control mini jib. Very compact as you can see. So let's put it all together and then I'll run through some of its features for you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is a sturdy video tripod for this. Now we're going to be moving or uh, carrying at least eight kilograms, nine kilograms on this thing. So it has to be a video tripod, or at least a really sturdy tripod. This is, doesn't mean it has to be expensive. This caver, I think, cost me around about hundred pounds with a very nice fluid head on the top of it. But it does have to be pretty strong. The centerpiece here, or the fulcrum, we undo the screw here to allow this bottom part to turn for us. That goes on there, on our tripod, and we just screw it down. Okay, when you get to the end of the screw, you'll notice that there's a small screw on the side here, which just gives you the ability to just cinch it on that last part. Turn the jib around so you can see things better. So now we can pull out the arms just by unlocking here with the first set of snap locks and pull it out. to our desired length. Now the length will depend very much on A, what you want to do with the jib, uh, what you're filming with it, and also the loads that are on it. The, the heavier the camera system, the shorter you will probably have to keep the jib. This is about the right, right length for a 35 millimeter uh, style camera. So now I'm going to take a pan tilt head, turn that on, Using the auto mount system, I'm just going to mount it on here, like so. Cinch it up. To counteract that, we're going to use two weights. We take the first weight on this carriage here. This slides on, tightens up. We take a second weight. And this is going to go into this hole on the back of here. I'm going to take my trusty A7, A7 III. I'm going to mount that under here. I'm going to take another NP style battery and I'm going to plug it into this port here in the side of the jib. And now we can balance our jib. So I'm going to release the lock on it here. And we can see that it's nose heavy. So what I'm going to do is just move this counterweight back a little and then lock it down. And you know the system is balanced when it stays put wherever you've put the jib, it doesn't move. We have a place here on the top of the jib where we can mount This, bring our HDMI cable up, plug it in here, and I'm going to plug in my shutter release cable, okay so once we've got everything set up we're ready now to power on our jib, so if we just take it here and power it on, and we should, first thing we should see is the jib finding its home position, it will go down to the bottom, hit the limit switch and come back up to the horizontal. Okay, so now that we've got our system set up and it's found its home position, we can ask it to set our endpoint. Then we can manually just move the jib to where we want it to start. We can turn. Pan tilt head around a little. Line up our subject. Hit the endpoint once more to lock that position. Then we can go to our out point, which by default is at zero. We can then manually move that down again until we're happy. And the system will now come back up 
to its endpoint, ready to play the move. Okay, if we hit play, the camera is triggered to start and the jib starts to move. Obviously we can control the speed of the jib, if we want it to bounce back and forwards, uh, it's easing values, etc. on the controller. Okay, so looking at our motor box specifically, the top axis on the motor box is driven by the, the NEMA 17 motor. On the bottom axis we have a fluid damper which gets rid of some of the small jittery moves that the jib may make and also helps with the, any backlash in the system. In the centre here we have a sturdy um, fulcrum which is completely adjustable. Now to demonstrate that what you do first of all is loosen off the camera head at this point so they can fring, swing freely. We can loosen off our fulcrum and we can tilt the whole system to any angle we want up to 90 degrees. So if we run it 45 like that Keeping our, making sure our camera is still level, we can tighten that up again. And now if we play our move again, we can see that the jib works across a 45 degree angle. Consequently as well, we can even turn the whole system up further, slacking the head off, slacking off here and bring the whole thing up to the top. And now we can see that we can produce an almost slider-like push into our subject. Now because the jib is part of the wider digital bird motion control system, we can also use the pan head come turntable as a second axis for the jib mounted under here. I'll show you how that works now. So while he's setting that up for you, how about some more guitar porn? None of these clips have had any post-stabilization added. They're just straight out of the camera. Okay, so with this setup, we have the Digital Bird pan head on the base of the jib. Um, the jib setup as before in a vertical position. Uh, just to show you it's possible, the pan tilt head has been mounted on the head on the upright position. And we'll go ahead and play a move with this. All the parts are available from the Thingiverse website and uh, there's also a more complete build instruction on the Autodesk Instructables website that you can look at. I'll leave links for all these things uh, down below. As usual, the kits are available from the Digital Bird Shopify channel and you can go either way with that again. It's the standard Digital Bird um, mainboard that drives the system and you can just buy that and find all the other parts yourself. The kit has everything pre-programmed for you and every nut and bolt you will require for the system. There are a few things that I don't supply in the kit. The motor is the heavier item, if, if, if you like. 
you will have to find your own tripod, and I've given a list of tripods that I think should uh, suit the jib. Um, in terms of postage and packing, it's become so expensive these days to actually send things around the world um, that the lighter I can make the kit, uh, the better. So I've tended to keep the kits down to th essentials and all the kind of small parts that are relatively easy to send. So it's to your benefit that the kits aren't inclusive of absolutely every, everything. Okay. I'm very happy with the jib. It gives me a whole gambit of extra moves uh, that I can produce over and above the, the slider moves. Um, the slider is definitely a more portable option uh, and there are certain moves that are just unbeatable from the slider. The pull-ins, the push-outs, they don't have any curves. You can perform the same kind of moves with the jib but there's always a certain curve on, on that move uh, as it pulls in and pulls out of the object. Sometimes that can add uh, to the shot, you know. So who could use a jib like this? Well, obviously any kind of product video, this is a huge benefit. Um, In-room in shots are classic. It has time-lapse and it has stop-motion on it, so you can use it for all those things. You could take it outdoors if you can be bothered lugging all the gear out with you and setting it up. Uh, but it, its limitation, I guess, is in the, it is a mini jib, and that comes with, with, with that. It will happily, on the tripod, go up to above head height and bring it down. Uh, to knee height, if you like. So you have about 550 millimeters of travel, typically, uh, depending on your payload on the jib. Now you can argue that you can get all the moves uh, that we produce with this with a slider. And, and you'd be right, by and large. But with a slider, you've got to disassemble it, maybe put it on a vertical stand, maybe set a tripod under it and fiddle around getting everything the right way to get that move on. With the jib, it's much simpler. You have, certainly have a slightly longer setup time at the beginning when you're balancing everything up, but thereafter it's much easier to, to um, adjust the jib to the shot you want. Uh, and that's for me where it really it wins hands down over a slider. Uh, would I give up my slider completely? Absolutely not. Uh, for those pull-in, push-out shots, the slider can't be beat really. It's simple. Um, and it's lightweight, so you can travel with it much more easily. Where the jib really comes into its own, I believe, is in the studio or in small sets, one room sets, where your subjects are generally uh, just, you know, one or two people in a room. Um, and in that kind of situation, it's a great asset to have. Thank you very much to all of you who have helped support the system by perhaps just buying a generic mainboard. Without that assistance, the system just couldn't be developed any further. Um, it costs quite a lot of money, as you can imagine, to put this stuff together. Uh, in my case, several times together um, before we come up with a complete system. So thanks again.